Okay, so I have here the Unicomp Ultra Classic keyboard. This just arrived. Um, shipping was pretty fast. The box is a little bit dirty, but that's okay. So now I'll do an unboxing of this. So before I open up this box, I have seen on some other YouTube videos, YouTube reviews, that there are some quality control issues, some molding issues with the keyboard, and I'm curious to see if those have been fixed or if they'll be present in this keyboard. Open. Oh, it's taped. It's taped on the sides also. Okay, so here's the box. Gonna have to blur that out. The invoice. And this is the Ultra Classic. Comes in this cardboard base. So that is the keyboard, looks pretty good. And it also comes with a message. All right, this looks like some information about keys and shipping. Okay, but okay, so I've done the box and the packaging out of the way, and this is the keyboard itself. Let's get it all in frame. This is the white or beige model, the 103 key variant. And as you can see over here, this is a USB. So I'm not seeing any obvious defects or plastic molding issues right now. Um, looks pretty clean, looks pretty new. Maybe the Printing on the side is a little faded, I can't really tell, but the keycaps all look fine, the printing looks fine, it's all a uniform color, they have this um, space from the mold that they use, there's a little bit of imperfection here, but Still looks pretty good. All right, so let's get into trying some keys. Those are buckling switch springs. Buckling, buckling spring switches. It's uh, quite clicky. I'm not a mechanical keyboard.
keyboard expert or anything. It's pretty clicky. Um, it, it's, it has a more substantial click, a more thorough click than, for example, Cherry MX Blues. In my experience, they have a very high pitched, very quick kind of click. This is quite substantial. And the keys are a decent weight. They're pretty heavy, but not as heavy as I was expecting. Now, I never owned an original. IBM Model M, but I have tried one a few times and that one had some pretty stiff switches, so maybe that one was just old. It was in a it was in a collection and you know that keyboard was 30 or 40 years old and used. This is brand new. So this is all quite good. We got a numpad. Um, I wonder, let's see. can you actually remove these? Oh, yes you can. So this keyboard has this nifty property where, let's see, there's a key cap and the switch underneath there two separate things, so it's really easy to switch out keycaps. I mean, it's easy to switch out keycaps on other keyboards also. It's loud, but... Actually, uh, an expected volume. Not horrendously loud, but... Definitely very, very satisfying to press. It's a very nice mechanical button kind of feel. I like this, this interesting feature. They have a modern like Windows 10 sort of Windows key, which looks very anachronistic when you look at this base sort of keyboard. Now, something people have complained about is that it's not built as strong. This keyboard isn't built as strong as the original IBM keyboards. And, well, let's see. There is some flex to the frame. The frame has some flex to it. I'll try to lift it with one hand. Especially like over here, you can definitely, if you push down hard, you can uh, push down on the frame, but I really don't think that's gonna be an issue at all. And, I've also seen in another video someone was complaining about the keys, the key caps being loose and wiggly. So, I mean, these seem fine to me. They have a little bit of wiggle, but you know, it's about the same as my other keyboard. Just, um, Cherry MX Red switches. It's a so it seems fine. I've been taking a close look at these keycaps, and on this caps lock, now I don't even know if it's gonna show up on my camera, but there's a little bit of like red, just a tiny, tiny smidgen of like red ink or something but it's very, very hard to see. So 
I don't consider that a problem at all. And over here, I've taken off both keycaps, I guess. Uh, you can see we have a bottom key, bottom key cap, which has this plunger, I think it's called. And over here, we just have a spring. Can't really do anything with that spring. I guess I could take it out, but I'm not going to. And here is the key. So to put in this key, to put this back in, we'll try to find the right direction and Oh, okay, well, that was loud. And then other key tap just goes right on top and it it's not gonna come off easily. This is what the keyboard looks like on the back. It has this black plastic sort of base. Uh, you can kind of see some just some slight, like, bumps from the molding, but this is going to be on the table anyway, so it doesn't matter. And for comparison, I have in my lap, it's the only other mechanical keyboard I own. This is a pretty inexpensive Corsair keyboard. Let's see, what model is it? It's the Vengeance K65. All I know is that it wasn't very expensive. I think I got it on a sale or something, but you know, it's been holding up pretty well. And we have under here, we have red switches. And so these are linear switches, so press straight up and down. There's no bump or click or anything in the way. It just goes, let's see if I can get a view, it just goes straight down. And these keys are pretty light. I have to make sure not to, sometimes when I'm typing, I'll accidentally type a letter or uh, I'll hit the space bar in the wrong time because these keys are quite light. Now in comparison, let's get this right side up. Let's see, so how is this, let's see, how is this cable done back here? This is just a Simple cable sticking out, nothing special, not removable or anything. Uh, over here we have a, um, just have a caps lock, num lock, shift lock, overlay. Pretty interesting logo. This doesn't have the Unicomp logo. I think it looks fine. Pretty unique actually, but like I was saying, these these keys they have a very substantial sort of bump. So you put some pressure on them, and there's a there's some resistance, and then if you put a little bit more pressure, the whole thing just goes down and it makes a click, and when you come back up. Or it wants to stay down a little bit, but you lift your finger up, it just snaps back. And it makes a very unique sort of clicking. Very, it, it, it reminds me of a very strong sort of buckling spring, but the keys are actually not too heavy. 
pretty loud keyboard. Let's see the space bar. Space bar feels pretty pretty reasonable. Something I noticed is that this surface over here, let's get it to can it focus macro. The surface is kind of like a frosted plastic surface, but the side of the keys, these are completely smooth and they're kind of reflective, but the top also has this frosted sort of sur surface. And let's see, what does the, what does the packaging say? I think it said this keyboard was like five pounds or something, so it's quite heavy and substantial, but not overly so. And this being the ultra classic, they cut out the plastic part on the top, so it's a big keyboard. See my hand for reference, but not overly big. Feels like a Get this feels like a pretty good size, pretty full size, and I'm gonna try this out, see how it goes. I think I'm gonna enjoy using this keyboard for just for typing stuff. Not really it for gaming or anything. I don't know what the response time is, or if there's and key rollover, I don't think so, but I'm gonna enjoy this for typing, for coding, mostly for coding. I, I really enjoy using these mechanical keywords when I'm you know, writing some C code. Feels authentic, feels old school. I don't know where I'm going with that. Yeah, there it is. Unicomp Ultra Classic. Okay, so I've had the chance to test out this keyboard for a few days, and what I can say about it is that it is loud. Now, before I was just just testing one key at a time, but if I were to actually type something at a reasonable pace, like... This keyboard is pretty loud. And something else I also mentioned is that the plastic molding does have a little bit of flex, especially, especially in this corner. That's most noticeable when transporting the keyboard, but the actual backing of it is very, very rigid. So, this thing, the whole the entire keyboard won't actually flex. It's just this plastic cover. But anyway, I'm quite happy with this keyboard. It's unique. I like the look of it. Um, it looks old. It looks utilitarian, it's not flashy. I don't like sort of flashy keyboard designs with RGB lighting and colors everywhere. I don't really like that, but I think this keyboard has this really nice, plain, useful design. And it's very usable. So if you guys have any questions about the keyboard, you can leave them in the comment section below. And I guess I'll see you in whatever video I do next.